everybody, welcome back to my channel. My name is Stephanie and this is all about my life after gastric bypass surgery. And in today's video, I'm going over 10 embarrassing things that are easier now, now that I've lost weight. a lot recently about how my life is changing after surgery and how things are a lot easier both mentally and physically to do and I've been kind of thinking about this video for a while but debating whether or not I really wanted to go into some of those really embarrassing things that used to be really hard for me when I was almost 400 pounds. But my channel is all about transparency. Because I didn't film myself and have this channel before when I was almost 400 pounds, I don't feel like there's a really good representation of how difficult my life was for certain aspects before I lost the weight and just how big of an impact this weight loss has been on my life. So I came up with 10 things that were really embarrassing to me before I lost 175 pounds and honestly were really hard to do. And most of these things, I didn't even realize how absolutely horribly impactful they were until they weren't a problem anymore. My list does ramp from kind of the least embarrassing to the absolute most embarrassing, oh my gosh, why are you putting this on the internet type of thing. So just be prepared, I will be covering all of it. But before I get too embarrassing, I just wanna say that if you are a returning subscriber, thank you so much for continuing to support my channel and my journey and my videos. It means so much to me and it's been such an interesting new part of my life to kind of see this grow and be able to interact with everybody. If you're not yet a subscriber, but you do find yourself watching my videos and enjoying the content that I put out, I just kindly ask that you consider hitting the subscribe button and ringing the notification bell so you get notified whenever one of my videos goes live, just to show your support for the kinds of videos that I'm putting out, if you want to. No big deal or anything. So number one is that I used to have to size up chairs before I sat in them to see if they might be able to handle me. This is really obvious in like a party setting or a wedding where you have fold out chairs. I never trusted that a fold-out chair was actually going to hold my weight and I was so mortified that I would sit in a chair and it would collapse and it everybody's eyes would be on me and it would just be this mortifyingly embarrassing situation and so there were a lot of times that I actually chose to like not sit and just kind of lean against a wall or do things strictly because I didn't feel that the seating available was honestly going to handle my weight. And in some situations that was easier than others, but it was really hard to walk into a situation, see that the seating wasn't really something that could probably handle 350 to 400 pounds and not really sure how to handle that situation without drawing immense attention to myself. Number two is something that I've noticed a lot more lately, and it's the fact that I used to think that people were constantly looking at me. And I used to feel that they were judging me or that they were laughing about me. There were a lot of situations where I would be out in public and I would be so uncomfortable with myself just being out in public that anytime I heard people laughing, especially if it was like a group of younger boys, I just assumed and was just super, super worried and embarrassed that they were laughing at me because I was walking down the road or, you know, I was out and about doing something. A really good example of this is um, several years ago, I used to live only about a mile away from my work. And for a while I was actually biking to and from work. But I remember feeling like everybody's eyes in all the cars along the road were staring at me and judging me for being this fat girl on a bicycle biking to work. I always assumed people would be looking at me and being like, wow, she's way too fat for a bike. And I've noticed now since I've lost weight that those thoughts don't consume me anymore. I am not absolutely worried all the time about what other people are thinking about me. There is a confidence that has come with this and it's unfortunate because I really wish that I had that confidence when I was heavier because 
I should never leave my house and feel like people are judging me. And in the vast majority of situations, I'm sure absolutely nobody was actually looking at me and judging me and laughing at me. But that was what I thought about myself and my self-esteem issues caused me to think everyone else was thinking the same thing. Those internal dialogues are really strong and they're really problematic when they start weighing you down just when you're out and about or making a good decision and biking to work. Number three is that I used to not be able to walk and talk at the same time. And I didn't really notice this until I started watching some old videos that I would post on like Facebook when I was a little bit younger. There was one time that I was giving a tour of my duck coop for uh, my family and friends on Facebook and I can hear that as I'm walking around the yard I am really out of breath and I can hear the huffing and puffing while I'm trying to talk on this simple you know little video that I was just making for family and friends but I used to not be able to do that. Like I just could not walk and talk without being very, very much out of breath. And I'm not talking like speed walking down the block, like literally just strolling around. It took so much for my body to get myself moving and get 400 pounds moving that it was hard for my lungs to keep up with that. Number four is along the same lines, and it's just the fact that I wasn't able to keep up with people. If I was out going for a walk or simply walking from one place to another with a coworker or with a friend or with literally anybody, again, if I was walking and talking with them, it was noticeably difficult for me to do that. And just keeping up with people in general. I have so many memories of not just vacations and trips where I couldn't keep up with the people around me and I was falling back further and further or people had to slow themselves down significantly just so that you know I would feel included but also mundane things as well like just trying to keep up with people when we were walking to and from class or trying to keep up with people at my job or any any sort of situation where it's not even just as big as like, oh, I can't keep up on this hike that we're all doing, which was a problem for me when I was even pretty young. I distinctly remember at least twice in my life where I faked an ankle injury, um, like rolling or twisting my ankle so that I could get out of some sort of physical activity at summer camp or in gym class. This was something that I was so embarrassed that I couldn't keep up with people that I would rather pretend that I was hurt and get out of it than have everybody watch me and see how difficult it is for me to keep up with them. And I was pretty young when these things happened. I distinctly remember one time in summer camp when I believe I was about maybe 11 or 12, um, you know, this was a huge problem for me. This was something that was really awful to me because I couldn't physically keep up and do the same things as other people, but I just felt like my peer group and, and kids around me when I was that age were really, really noticing and judgmental uh, when that happened. For example, that hike in summer camp that I'm referencing, um, I distinctly remember the moment that I started crying and telling the camp counselor that I twisted my ankle and I couldn't go on any further. And I was crying because I was embarrassed and I couldn't, I couldn't go on anymore and I was really tired. And one of the kids in camp started saying, well, I saw she's faking it. She, she did it on purpose, which was even more embarrassing because I didn't actually fake the process of twisting my ankle. I just told her that I did. So for the kid to say that he saw me fake it um, was just kind of adding to that whole idea that I'm the fat kid, I didn't really have that happen, I'm too lazy to do it, and all of it was just sort of feeding off of, off of each other and off of itself, and it was just a bad situation to be an overweight kid. It's just a bad situation, and it's super embarrassing, and that stuff sticks with you even after you're an adult.
Number five is that I used to always be worried about what cashiers were thinking about the food that I was checking out with. And this was both in like a grocery store situation where I was worried about the things that were in my cart and whether or not somebody would judge me for the healthy or non-healthy food choices that I was making. But even if I had a relatively healthy mix of food in my cart, if I had like one thing in there that was a bad choice, I was worried that somebody was going to be like, well, that's why she's fat. <laughs> she's got that pie in there. I wonder if she's going to eat the whole thing herself. And it just kind of feeds off of that idea that everybody was looking at me and judging me for everything that I did. I know rationally that that's probably not happening, but that's where my mind was going. And the biggest example of this is when I would go out to fast food. I talked about this in my binging video and, and kind of the food that I used to eat. Like for example, when I would go to McDonald's, I would have way too big of a portion. So I would get something like a Big Mac meal and I'd probably make it large, but I would also want to have a McChicken because I loved the taste of McChicken. And I could never settle on what flavor I wanted and I wanted all of the food. And so I would order the Big Mac meal large with a McChicken. But then I would get really, really worried that they'd be like, wow, that's a lot of food for one person. So I would order like a small drink in addition. So it seemed like there was two meals there. <laughs> and then I'd end up with two drinks and I wouldn't want two drinks and it would just be a big mess and I was spending more money than I actually wanted. All because I was super worried about what that person was gonna think if I ordered the food that I actually wanted to order. The worst I ever had it, I would hit multiple stores. Um, and I would get different things at multiple fast food places or multiple stores. And that was really bad because then I didn't necessarily have to worry about what people were thinking because they didn't know what I had already purchased at the store prior. Man, I'm glad I don't do that anymore. Number six is that I used to always have to use the handicap stall. A regular stall at a public restroom was too cramped for me and I just felt like I couldn't quite fit in it um, in the way that I needed to in order to get my business done. It was too tight to maneuver. It didn't feel comfortable. And then I was always worried about the fact that I was using a handicap stall and like, what if I took the handicap stall for somebody who was actually handicapped and needed it and then I walk out of the stall and they're like, great, if fat girl was in it and I've had to pee for like three minutes now, I just, I was really worried that I was gonna get myself in a situation like that. Um, but the fact of the matter is, is I couldn't really use a regular stall. So I probably needed to use the handicap stall just as much as someone else did. Girls gotta pee. <laughs> but number seven is kind of along those same lines. And this is where we're starting to get into some really, really embarrassing situations. One of the reasons a regular stall was not good enough for me is because I had a really hard time wiping myself when I got to be about 400 pounds. Um, it's not that I couldn't do it and, and I just want to put that out there that I was able to wipe myself and I, I could do it, but it was difficult. And it was something that I actually found that I had to maneuver myself in a certain way in order to do. And a lot of times I would end up putting my shoulder up against the stall wall and how do I say this? Leaning against it in such a way that I would force my arm back further than I could reach on its own. Um, and then I could wipe without a problem, but just standing and, and wiping in any direction, I could not reach what I needed to reach without assistance. And so I found that I could do that. I found that I could press my arm up against the wall to physically make sure that I could reach what I needed to reach. And that's one reason why the smaller stalls didn't work for me, not only because there wasn't a lot of room for maneuvering, but the handicap stalls usually are in the corner of a bathroom against an actual full-fledged wall. And then I'd be able to actually lean against that and put my weight against it and not be leaning against the stall walls. So that there was a big reason why I honestly had to do that. And I had to do the same thing at home. I had to lean up against the wall a lot of times in order to reach the things that I needed to reach. And that brings me to number eight, which is showering. Because in order to clean myself 
effectively, I had to do the same thing in the shower. I would lean up against the wall in the shower to make sure that I could clean and reach all the areas that I needed to reach because just standing and washing, I did not have the reach to be able to do what I needed to do. And in addition to just cleaning and showering, shaving was really, really, really difficult to do. I was thankfully flexible enough that I could actually prop my leg up on the wall in front of me in the shower and shave that way. But there was no other way for me to really do that. And if I wasn't careful, I, I could slip and I could fall in a weird way. And so there were a lot of times I just didn't shave. I didn't wear short enough skirts or shorts or anything to really have that be too much of a problem. So I would go long periods of time without shaving and I would only shave if I was really going to like a nicer event where I was wearing a dress or something. Um, if I really was in a situation where someone was gonna see my legs, then I would shave. But for the most part, I tried really hard not to because it was so difficult and it would take me like a 45 minute shower to shave both legs. It was not an easy process. I could shave my legs now in like 10 minutes. I could do a really quick shave, just put my leg up on the edge and quickly do a shave and it's not a problem anymore. The time that it saves me is crazy. <laughs> Number nine, since we're on the subject of not being able to reach very easily, is tampons and my NuvaRing birth control. Tampons were a little bit of a difficult process for me because again, I, I had to be able to reach things. I was able to do that to, to some extent without too much difficulty, but I switched my birth control over several years ago to the NuvaRing. It was a recommendation by my doctor because I have such an irregular period, most likely related to my weight. But in all honesty, I never really got a solid answer as to why <laughs> that was happening to me, why I had such an irregular period. Um, but the solution was to put me on a continuous release hormonal birth control, which is the NuvaRing, which goes up inside you and stays there until you take it out and replace it every, you know, three or four weeks. That was her solution. I was having a lot of ups and downs with the pill. It just things were not working well for me. So we switched to that. But at that appointment when she recommended it and she was talking to me about why she thought it would work better for me, I had this moment where I was like tunnel visioned and I was staring at her and her mouth was moving and it was all muffled like in the TV shows. And all I could think about was how am I going to put that inside of me? Um, I have a hard enough time with a tampon. How am I going to put that in there in a way that's not going to be really uncomfortable. Um, and in all honesty, I did have to modify it. I had to put my leg up on something and I had to put the little ring, it's it's a little, it's not plastic, but it's a little flexible plastic ring. And I actually folded it up and put it in a tampon applicator so that I had a little bit more of an ability to kind of sh shove it where it needed to go. But I was so scared the first time I tried to do it because I had a very difficult time doing it. And until I tried to put it in the tampon applicator, I really, really struggled because I just couldn't do it enough. I just couldn't reach enough. And it was really, really embarrassing for me. And I was thinking, how am I going to do this? How am I going to do this every month if this is going to be such a, a horrible struggle? Because I just could not easily reach things for medical reasons, you guys. I mean, it's just insane what I put up with. And number 10 is that I used to get really sweaty and not just generally, like if I was walking around or just existing and like sweating heavily, but I really noticed that I would get sweaty down there and I would get sweaty on my butt. I mean, I'd get butt sweats. <laughs> Sometimes it would be bad enough that I'd leave like a little sweat triangle on a plastic chair. And if you've ever done that, you know exactly what I mean, right? <laughs> um, whereas like my butt was all humid and sweaty. And like when I stood up from the chair, you could see that it was all sweaty and it was super embarrassing to me. I would do things like try to leave a chair by by going like this and sliding my thigh along it while I stood up so it would like 
wipe if I thought that that was something that I was going to have to deal with. Um, but it was also something that I noticed just in my underwear. Everything was moist. <laughs> I, I just was too sweaty. And I didn't realize that that wasn't normal or that that could be better. And it's like not a problem anymore. <laughs> but I didn't realize that you're not just all the time moist between your legs. That's what she said. But really, like, I just, I thought some of these things were normal and what everybody had to deal with. And once I got out of that, I realized that that's not, that's not normal. And you shouldn't have to worry about those things and you shouldn't be that sweaty. Okay, some people are just sweaty. Like, that's okay, but... <laughs> You know what I mean? So there you go. There's the most embarrassing stuff that I could think of that were problems almost every day. Um, things that I ran into all the time that consumed my thoughts and things that I don't even think about anymore. I pretty much never think about these things and whether or not they apply to me anymore, but it took a lot of brain power to get to the point where I wasn't worried about a chair and whether or not I could sit in a fold out chair. It took a lot of effort for me to realize that people don't care what I'm eating. Like in the vast majority of situations, they just don't care. They're just trying to do their job. And I can't tell you how much nicer it is to be able to just do some things normally, um, to not have to find an accommodation way to wipe myself or to shower and clean myself properly. Things that were harder than they should have been. Those things never should have been that hard. But when I say in these videos that my life is totally different and things are like night and day, this is a really good example of what I mean by that. When we're talking about just you know, daily living activities. That is a big, big difference in my life. So thanks so much for watching. Don't judge me too much for my embarrassing stories. Be nice. <laughs> Make sure you stay happy and healthy and always look at the big picture and I will see you guys in the next one.